So in my last video, I asked you guys what we should build next. Like Marzi said to build the self-tightening Spider-Man suit. So about five and a half thousand likes later, we're doing it. And that was three weeks ago. This project has been haunting my brain. I've put probably an unhealthy amount of time and thought into this one. So I really hope you guys like it. Uh, and if you do, you know that like button's always right down there, you know, right next to the subscribe button. How convenient. And also now we need more idea comments because clearly if enough of you want it, I'll make it happen. Maybe Hawkeye's changeable bow and arrow tips. I won't got a lot of likes too. All right, so if we slow down the video, Peter's wearing a super baggy suit to start with. And when he hits his chest, the suit shrinks down to fit. But if we look closely, it looks like the material itself is actually shrinking. Like the shrinking isn't just coming from one place. It's like evenly spread all over which is really cool, but it also makes it really difficult. Like that means we can't just have like one central point of shrinkage in the back. We need points of shrinkage from all over. So that's where my problem started. Actually for the past two weeks, my phone background has just been the gif of Spider-Man suit moving. Just constantly looking at this thing, just trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this. So an obvious solution that came to mind was some sort of like shoelace mechanism on the back of the suit. This allows us to shrink down a large area of fabric with just two control points, like the shoelaces. Just add a couple motors and pulleys and we should be good. So I ordered a bunch of Spider-Man suits and shirts and anything else that looked useful. But while we wait for that stuff to arrive, I thought it'd be good to practice this lacing technique on a t-shirt. Well, not just any t-shirt actually. We made these ones. And I don't mean like we're working with a third party company to mass produce and ship all the t-shirts. I mean, we literally hand printed these ones ourselves right out back. We also made a fresh new website where you can go order these and I'm signing all of them. So we're doing this because I get no joke, thousands of requests from you guys to sell my inventions. So by starting with like shirts and stuff, that's pretty easy to do. You know, by doing everything ourselves, we can learn kind of the ins and outs of releasing a product. So eventually we can bring some of my actual inventions to you guys. So we've got three designs. First, we've got the evolution shirt with the end being myself on the hoverboard. Then we got the superhero shirt with me and all my gadgets. We got the swords. We got the Edith glasses. We got the watch shield, shoulder turret, Black Panther claws on the hoverboard. You gotta love it. And lastly, we've got the classic logo design uh, with a little bit of a new twist. Very simple, very clean. Comes in three colors, got the black, white, and the navy blue, of course. So if you support what we're about and wanna help us out to eventually bring you guys real inventions and also get a sweet signed shirt, check out jlazervideo.com slash clothing. Also, it's gonna be like super limited because there's only two of us doing this and you know, no idea if we'll ever do this again. So if you're interested, order soon. Anyways, we're gonna try and shrink an XL down to a medium. So after watching a few tailoring videos, I learned where to take off the material to shrink clothing. Like the shoulders are difficult to change, but the torso, pretty doable. So I sewed in some thread in the zigzag shoelace pattern, spaced out two inches on the back. So now when I pull the threads, it shrinks. Honestly, not bad. You know, maybe one day all the shirts we make will shrink down to the push of a button. We can have like a one size shirt fits all. That'd be pretty cool. The only issue is now we have a lot of wrinkles in the back. We got a lot of string hanging off the shirt too. That could definitely get tangled. So I thought one way to eliminate all these wrinkles and string is to roll the fabric. So I built a roller device with the motors on each end that would fit onto the shirt and roll up the fabric. Honestly, this kind of worked too, but we got this stiff tube hanging off the shirt that doesn't really like to bend that well. So I'm afraid if we like have it in a tight suit, definitely gonna cause some problems. Like honestly, I think I prefer the string and pulley method, but so far all we've done is the back. You know, we still gotta get the arms and legs. So I figured a good way to test this motor string design on the arms was by building that back to the future self-shrinking jacket. This thing doesn't fit. I feel like this is kind of like the 1980s version of the Spider-Man suit. I would bet the Marvel team took some inspiration from this movie. But in this clip, you can see there's no CGI. It's clear that the only thing actually shrinking is the arms. Like, I mean, it almost looks like they attached ropes to his arms and had people behind him just pulling up to make the sleeves look like they went up. Oh wait, that's exactly what they did. Anyways, here's how to make it. First, order a replica jacket, then spend far too long in the mirror with the jacket. Get two geared DC motors, 3D model and print mounts and pulleys for the motors. 
sew the motors into the jacket, attach strings from the sleeves to the motors, make a box to hold the batteries and the two-way switch to reverse the polarity, wire everything up, and boom, Marty McFly at your service. Motors right in here, attached down to the arms, fancy little push button switch, up, down. Check this out. Quick, Marty, put these on. You'll never fit anything in those clothes. Oh, Doc, this is heavy. All right. All right, all right, all right, back to the Spidey suit. So I thought maybe to limit the chaos of the wrinkles and the string, we'd have some sort of like top plate that would sit over the back of the suit and like all the fabric would slide behind it. Problem is like, what are we gonna attach this to? That's not just gonna shrink up with the suit. So I thought maybe if we use magnets to kind of stick this top plate over the back of the suit and then like braced it with some like fiberglass rods. So it'd be a little bit flexible so it could move with your body, but not like crumple up when the suit shrunk. I don't know if that's making sense. Uh, so I built a prototype with some wood and some magnets but I ended up figuring out there's too much friction between the magnets and the fabric So like when you try and pull fabric through the magnet like the magnets just pop off the magnets flying everywhere And there's still a string and wrinkles and now it's even more complicated. Let's see. What else did I think of? Oh, yeah zippers Thought zippers might be able to help like if we motorize them all we need is just a string to pull the zipper along the track Pretty simple and might give a nice finish But anyone who's ever used a zipper knows they like to get stuck a lot because we're trying to condense all this cloth and zip it up I kept getting stuck on that extra cloth. So I thought then maybe we could use like the lace mechanism underneath the zipper so we'd like scrunch everything up and then zip it over the top. But then now it's now two steps, it's even more complicated. Like, ugh, you see why this is taking me so long. Deceptively hard project. And the whole time I was doing it, I was thinking there's gotta be an easier way. Classic rule of thumb is always go with the simpler design because there's less stuff that's gonna break. All right, let's take it back to the drawing board and look at some simpler ideas that might work better. First up, vacuum sealing. You already know how this works. Just basically stick a vacuum in a giant sack and it sucks all the air out. Form fits to whatever's inside. All right, let's get vacuum sealed. Tape me up. Hi, it was a history major. This is what I'm doing now. Bro, oh, you're lucky to be doing this now as a history major. Got the vacuum. Get a little like tapping hole. You wanna hold it or tape it? Let's tape it, dude. We're official here. Otherwise, it'd just be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Look how baggy it is right now. No pun intended. So hit it. <laughs> this is before and hit it. Ready? All right, so this is actually much simpler. All we need is a tiny vacuum. That's probably pretty easy to build. But the main issue with this one is all the wrinkles. Because the suit material itself isn't contracting, you get all these wrinkles. The only way to avoid these wrinkles is to inflate a stretchy suit, like a balloon or something, and then it had it shrink down on its own to form fit over whatever was inside. Problem is, how would I get inside the balloon in the first place? Basically, we're screwed either way. So I started looking into materials that controllably change size. It's pretty well known that most materials expand with heat. But if we look at the thermal expansion, expansion chart, most materials don't expand more than like a percent or so. Whereas ideally we would like a change of about a few hundred percent if we're gonna be able to shrink the suit enough. What we really need is a material that shrinks with heat or something like, um, so this is heat shrink. You just insulate wires, just add heat, and it shrinks down to fit what's inside. It'll shrink to a half or even a third of its original size. And this is what happens when you let a YouTuber shop online. <laughs> yeah, this is two inch low temperature heat shrink. The low temp part is important because just maybe I won't get third degree burns. So here's a test spidey sleeve I made and uh, I'm gonna have my associate hit me with a heat gun. And the safe word is what? Word like, out. ow, ow, it's burning. How about that? How about that'll be the safe word? I won't respond to that. That is so weird. Does that hurt? Uh, it it like, doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel great. It feels hot. Nice, well done. All right. Well done, sir. Look at that. Does it, did it hurt at all? <laughs> For the camera, no, but <laughs> off camera, yeah, it kind of hurt a lot. All right, so honestly, I bet this would work if you didn't have to spend an hour or so like shrinking your entire suit down. <laughs> oh, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> oh, that what is you? warm. Yeah, I know it's warm. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it also doesn't re-expand. So it's like cool until Spider-Man has to go home and like cut himself out of the suit. Uh, pull, 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 pull. <laughs> no! 
<laughs> Dude, that's actually crazy. <laughs> that's literally a replica of my arm. All right, all right, let me restate. We need a material that shrinks with heat, but also re-expands. So I did a little bit more digging and came across what just might be the perfect solution to this problem we're having. All right, ready? Check this out. Artificial muscles from fishing line and sewing thread. This stuff was discovered in 2014 and could be used for exoskeletons and comfort adjusting clothing. That is perfect. So here's how it works. Basically the way nylon fishing line is made aligns the polymer chains in the fibers direction, allowing the fibers to experience large reversible contractions, which can actually contract up to about 4%. Now this 4% doesn't seem like much, but if we twist the fishing line along with some conductive thread in such a way that coils start to appear, we can increase this stroke or contraction length by up to 20 or 30% potentially. Best of all, this stuff is actually really thin too. It's just like thread. So it should blend in perfectly with the Spider-Man suit. So in theory, we can make the whole suit out of this stuff. Also another benefit is this stuff is strong. Not only can it contract and stretch more than a human's muscle, it can also lift a hundred times more weight than a human muscle of the same size. So if you were to put like a bunch of these things together to form the size of like a human muscle, you'd be able to lift almost 1500 pounds. So in theory we could put a bunch of these fibers actually in the suit and we could get super strength too. All right, all right. But before we get ahead of ourselves, there's definitely some downsides. First, the efficiency of these muscles is not great. It's like 1% efficient compared to like the 20% I think our muscles are. So we need a massive power source to do anything like this. Also, when I was trying this out, I wasn't getting anywhere near the contractions the paper stated. Most of my attempts didn't work at all, and the ones that did, I was maybe able to get like 10% contraction, but that's nowhere near enough. So as badly as I wanna use this stuff, I think we're gonna have to hold off until another project. However, your boy's got one last idea. In these artificial muscle papers, they're comparing it a lot to the stuff called nitinol. It's basically a memory metal. It's a nickel titanium alloy, and its molecules are aligned in such a way that it actually remembers the shape it was in, and can return to that shape when heated. It's used quite regularly in the medical field for like orthodontists or heart surgeons. Like they can make stints that'll actually like prop open arteries, which is pretty cool. All because of its amazing memory properties. So I'll leave links down below if you're interested in this stuff, you can check it out. So yeah, heart surgery is important, but you know what's also important? Self-shrinking Spidey suits. So I think this stuff could work. So I ordered up a bunch of it, and uh, it's not cheap by the way, so again, that like button right down there. So while we're waiting for this stuff to get here, let's complete our Spidey fit. Luckily, you know, this ain't my first Spider-Man project. I've been making web shooters since day one, from cheap, lighter web shooters to ones you can actually swing on, so I don't think we'll have any problem in this area. Oh, that reminds me, if you've been following me on TikTok, I actually made a new version of a web shooter that shoots a dart with a string attached to it and a magnet on the end, so you can like stick it onto metal stuff and with the press of a button, it's got a little motor that reels everything in. Pretty fun and cool. Like this is the type of projects we can make and definitely get to you guys pretty soon. Eventually, maybe even ones that we can swing off of. But first, again, we gotta start with the shirts. Also, I built a little COVID web shooter too. Basically, it's snap activated, but hand sanitizer in is the web fluid. Um, so basically, every time you snap, it dispenses a little bit of hand sanitizer right on your hand or whatever else you pointed at. So yeah, definitely follow me on TikTok. Now you might be hoping I use my Spider-Man wall climbers with this suit. And to that, I'm gonna say which one, which is a pretty baller answer in my opinion. But now, probably gonna use the suction grabbers because uh, there's a mm, lot more buildings and trees in LA. Oh, lastly, we can't forget the mask. So let's make one with those moving eyes that everyone wants. So I downloaded and 3D printed a Spider-Man mask. And this took about like a day to print and came out terribly which is a real bummer, but we might still be able to save it because uh, all we really need is that front plate, which actually ended up coming out pretty well. We just need that so your nose doesn't stick out. Like, have you ever seen someone in a Spider-Man mask with a nose? Bruh. It's weird, like, he doesn't have a nose. So to make the eyes move, I cut out some dark plastic and line the eyes with it. Then using some elastic, I rigged it up so when you pull the string, the eyes squint, just like in the movies. All right, all right, so now I think we have all the parts for the Spidey shrink suit, except we haven't finished the suit yet, so let's wrap that up, no pun intended. So I thought it'd be easier to make a small suit expand versus a large suit contract. So I got a suit and marked out areas to cut to make it baggy. Then using the other Spidey gear I got, I sewed in fabric that matched the suit pretty well. I mean, you can definitely tell it's a different suit if you look close up, but remember this is a fabric that's gonna be hidden when the suit contracts, so I'm not too worried about it. Also, the night and all springs finally arrived, so I first did some weight tests to see how much we could lift with them. Looks like each spring can lift about a pound and a half, so not bad at all. So obviously we can't use like water or blowtorch to heat them. So I think we should be able to heat it up with electricity if we dump enough current into it. So I tested it with my power supply and figured out that basically the more current we put into this thing, the faster it heats up. You know, surprise, surprise. So now we just need a battery that can do that. 
So then I figured out all the points to attach the springs to to get the best shrink. Cut all the springs to length. Then I ran some wire after each spring and sewed them all in place. And we put the activation button in the chest and uh, I'm using some really high discharge small lipo batteries to get the best effect. We spaced them all around the suit. This way we get a lot more equal spread of the electricity. Cause like if we had one giant battery, all the current would probably go through like one of the springs. It gets super hot, but the rest wouldn't shrink. So I think this way we'll get a better result. Dude, you're smoking. I am? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> so in total we have 26 springs controlled by 13 batteries. It ended up being very complicated to do, but uh, Honestly, less complicated than my other original plan. Just goes to show how complicated this project is. So before I test this out, let's look at some projects that you guys built and sent to me on Instagram. At Jay, there's a video. Check it out. Awesome stuff guys, I really like to see what y'all are making. Very inspiring to myself and everyone else who's watching these videos. So if you've made anything cool, definitely send it my way. At Jay video or on email works too. All right, now let's test out the suit. Basically, I've got switches in my chest that trigger the relays to heat up the springs, which causes them to contract. I can control each limb individually because areas like my back take longer to heat up than my arm. So it just gives us a little bit more control. So obviously it's not perfect, but I say it definitely looks decent for a first version. And I'd love to hear how you guys would have gone about this. And in the future, I might try and like flatten out these springs and get rid of some of the kinks because this metal stuff, you can actually like program it to memorize its shape and that could definitely smooth out some of the rough edges. Oh, and also just being better at sewing would have helped too, I think. Oh, and for the mask, I could also add like a heads up display like the one he has in the movies, like my Edith glasses. I think that would really complete the whole Spider-Man suit. So there you have it guys, self-tightening Spider-Man suit, web shooters, wall climbers, and moving eyes, you know, we've done it all. So don't forget to comment your future ideas, send me your awesome projects, like and subscribe, and of course, you know, buy a shirt if you want. So thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.